Hello and welcome to this small tutorial in about creating concrete elements in Revit. The video is made in Revit 2012, but any version of Revit can actually be used. First of all, we want to make sure that the basis of our concrete element is the correct one. So we start clicking New, uh, and since the template file is not a part of uh, the drop down, we have to browse it ourselves. If you want the template file to be a part of this drop down, you can go into Options, File Location, and add the template file to the container. In this case, we don't want to add it, so we must uh, browse the template file and choose EAA Template Element. Now we are ready to draw our element. First of all, I would like to explain this template file. It's not that far away from the one you already know when you create buildings. As you can see when we take a look at this floor plan, which, call, which is uh, called bottom element, we have um, the four uh, elevation marks. Instead of north and south and east and west, they are renamed to left and right and front and back. Um, the floor plans is the uh, exact same. Uh, bottom element is what we could compare with the ground floor plan. We have top door, which could be first floor, and top element, which could be, for example, roof or first floor. Then I have made two modular grids, one and two, 2400 millimeters uh, in between those two. I have created some uh, reference planes. If you go into architecture, reference plane, you can create uh, those reference planes so yet that you can use them for creating your uh, element. What I have done is that as you can see, when I mark this one, you can see that I have renamed uh, the reference plane to front element. I have one called center element, uh, left door side, right door side. And then I have already withdrawn eight millimeters in both sides. So um, the element uh, already have this total of 16 millimeter join when they are placed together. So right side and left side, and you can see the eight millimeters. So first of all, we want to make sure that the levels and the heights correspond to the element that we are going to create. So I changed the name of the level uh, and I can create new levels um, by uh, copying levels or you can right click at one uh, and create similar. Then the level will appear as a floor plan as well uh, in the same time. Top front plate and top back plate. Those two uh, elements are the, the two that, that I want to create in this uh, project. A front element and uh, sorry, a, a front plate and a back plate. We'll use model in place because of this component that we're going to create is unique. That means we cannot reuse it in other projects. The front plate is uh, very unique for this uh, element. So I create uh, an extrusion and since I renamed the reference planes, I can use them as work planes for my, uh, in this case, for my uh, front plate. So we would like to create a front, front plate which have the depth of 80. Use a line tool, make sure 
chain is checked so that we can create a line, a continuous uh, line on the way around this element. So first of all, I'll create a loose sketch for my shape of my front plate, as you can see. Because I'm doing it uh, in this way is that it makes it possible for me to align the lines of this uh, sketch to the corresponding levels uh, and uh, reference planes. Then I'll change the material. This front plate is made of concrete so that when I make a section uh, it will appear as concrete. Create the back plate in, in the exact same way as you created the front plate. Now we would add, like to add some more geometry. So you hit the back plate and say edit in place. So we edit the geometry of the back plate. We would like to add some more geometry. So hit into home and extrusion. Select the work plane that you want to place this new geometry on. Left side I choose. And uh, by using the, the sketch tools, the draw tools, you can create the geometry that you want um, to add. Remember to choose the material so that it will appear as concrete. So again, if you're using the Align tool, when you uh, create the geometry, you can um, use the advantage in that if you, if you decide to, to change the measurements of uh, the elements afterwards, um, you don't have to go and edit everything, but you can just move the, the reference plane and the modular grid. So that was how to add some more geometry to our model in place. But what if we want to subtract some geometry from our model? Let us take a look at that. First of all, I mark um, the model in place that I want to, to modify. I mark it and say edit in place. So the way to to cut some geometry from uh, the model is in place is the exact same way that we used when we created geometry. As you can see, we have tools for creating geometry in the forms, and we have a tab called Void Forms. As you can see in this small video clip, uh, that we add some geometry called Void, which will be subtracted from the, the main geometry use a line tool to create the form that you want to to have. In this case, uh, we would like to create a sort of a fake joint um, so so that um, the, the element uh, have this fake joint in the front. And I drag the extrusion and I finish the model. Before I do that, I can I can copy this form and I can mirror it, as you can see. Um, and I can then finish the model and the element will have this uh, fake joint on uh, the front uh, plate. Okay, now I want to remove this the sharp edges of this uh, element all the way around the, the front plate. Um, so it's it's done by the exact same way as we did the, the fake joints uh, before. So um, let's uh, try to see how we do that. First of all we of course mark the front element and say edit in place. And um, we will then again add some void geometry. This time I'll uh, take a void sweep um, 
So first of all, I'll create a sketch showing uh, which uh, corners of this element uh, which should be uh, removed. So I do the same as I did when I created um, the front element. I'll create a loose sketch first of all, um, and then afterwards I'll, I'll um, align the the sketch to the edges of um, my front element or to the levels, and I lock them. When we are doing this uh, void sweep, um, we are actually doing uh, two steps. The first step is to create a, a path um, where this uh, this uh, sweep will follow. So um, this is the first part that we have to do. Um, so when we finish uh, our sketch, um, we, uh, we, we click uh, the checkbox for uh, sketching the path. So when we finish that, we can uh, create the shape. So first of all, hit the green tick, finish uh, editing mode. Um, and then we can see the, the red dot, uh, meaning that this is the center of this uh, profile that we are going to sketch now. Again, using the draw tools, and I'll create a a triangle of uh, 15 millimeters uh, times 15 millimeters, and when I'm happy about it, I'll uh, click the the green check and uh, finish model and the nice rounding of uh, the element. So now my let's say concrete work is done. I'm happy about that. So now uh, I need to add all the reinforcements. Um, so in the same way I use to create a model in place, um, I use uh, structural framing for my uh, category, call it reinforcement, and I then create uh, the bars uh, as we created uh, the concrete elements by drawing some uh, uh, circles and uh, giving them uh, an extrusion. The reason why I create this reinforcement as um, a model in place is that I find this reinforcement very unique for this uh, concrete element. Um, you could choose to create a family for uh, for this purpose, but uh, I will show you in a in a moment when we create hangers and stuff uh, how to create your own family. But in this case, I would uh, um, create this uh, reinforcement as uh, a model in place. So now I have created all my vertical uh, bars in my reinforcement and um, I will then the next step will then be creating um, the horizontal bars in this uh, reinforcement um, but I'm sure you can imagine how to do that but okay and in the end of this uh, video I'll show you very very fast how to create your own hanger or fitting to this uh, concrete element it's a very very good idea um, to create stuff outside uh, the project in a family on its own. I started up um, a, a new family uh, and I created a new generic model. Um, and as you can see, I sketch uh, this uh, small fitting. First creating um, a void sweep with a, with a path. That's what I just did, sketching the path. And now I'm creating um, the profile. So it's just a 8mm uh, hanger. And I can load it into a project. That's all for me. Thank you very much.